What's going on YouTube? It's your friend Siren Frost coming at you with a deck profile tonight. Um, tonight is going to be another deck profile install, Car Fight Vanguard installment. And this deck profile of the, of the circus is my Pale Moon Circus Nightmare Doll build. Now, listen guys, when people keep telling me that Nightmare Dolls is going to be a bitch, it's a bitch. <laughs> no ifs, ands, or fucking buts about it. So when the character booster of Romy Lambert came out and I saw the list, I noticed there were not only more Silver Thorns for me to have and more Hari support, they were also going to be making more Nightmare Dolls. And I'm like, oh, fucking hell, damn shit. So you know what? If I want all these, I'm going to say, you know what? Fuck it, I'll invest it. I um, purchased myself a case, a full case, which is literally like almost $1,200 right there at my locals. But it's worth it for me because I'm slowly paying off my bot, um, my shop owner. And he's pretty cool about it too, which is... I love my shop manager. He is amazing. So I'm gonna shop. I'm gonna shop now, and get you guys a deck profile that you guys may or may not want to see. And for most of you guys who do not like deck uh, deck profiles from Carvite Vanguard, don't click this video and go watch Yu-Gi-Oh because that'll be a installment for another time. So for my for my new starting Vanguard, I'm playing Nightmare Doll uh, Natalie. Natalie is a very handy card. Now, for her ability is, you count the last one, you, you put her in the soul, and then you look at the top three cards in your deck, and have put one in this... Okay, hold on. Let me just read this damn shit. Put one card from among them into your soul, and put two cards from your from among them in the bottom of your deck in any order you wish. If you put a card with Nightmare Doll in its card name, which the whole deck is revolved around, so it's no symbol, look at the top three cards again, Put one card from, from among them into your soul, and then shuffle your deck. So, since we're playing with nothing but dollies here, she... I mean, let me ask you guys this question. Is it good for me to play two of her, at least? Because that effect is so broken, or just leave her at one? I think it'd just be safe to be at one. But this ability is no generation break, so you can use this anytime you want. Unless your opponent reti decides to retire it. So you gotta better hurry and use that shit fast. But what you can do is you counter blast one, you put it into the soul, you look at the top three cards from your deck, and if you get a nightmare doll, you can look at the top three cards again and put another nightmare doll in the soul. So you may be lucky enough to get even get like nightmare doll Alice in there. Which that's what the main goal is kind of a bit about anyways. And now for trigger lineup guys, I think you guys are all gonna probably laugh at me or like thinking, what are you thinking? Well, here it comes. I'm playing four of uh, Nightmare Doll uh, Dories, four Nightmare Doll uh, Sydney. She's a draw trigger. You're all probably thinking, like, why in the hell are you running draw triggers? The deck doesn't really need it. Good question. I decided to try something outside of the norm, and I know Nightmare Dolls can just do a lot of stand triggers. So, with that being said, I figured draws would not hurt, and plus. The bigger hand, the ha the size of a hand could change the entire, um, the change of the game. So I'm also playing eight crits. So I'm playing four Maribels, and four of the other new one is called Windy, which was kind of a quinky, quinky dink for me because that's the name of my workplace, Windy's. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. You know, it's it's a funny thing. All right, let me see if I can make some room right up here. I don't know if I just. Yeah, there's plenty of room right there. Alright. And I'm sorry, guys, I'm doing this on my bed, too, so bear with me. Alright, so for grade ones, we're playing four copies of Juliet. Uh, GB1 is ain't, whenever time she boosts, you soul charge. So she has that, um, Amino Horakari's ability in Genesis. But she has the boost. And it doesn't have to be involved with grade three, just boost. That's all it does. <laughs> I like it. And next, I'm playing four of Leslie. Leslie's skill is, whenever a Nightmare Doll Alice is put into your soul, you may re restand, restand her. So anytime uh, there's a loop between her and Catherine, anytime Alice goes to the soul, you st you restand Leslie. And when Alice comes back out, you can keep using that ability over and over again. And that is the signature mark of Pale Moon Circus. Multiple attacks. Kind of like the same equal partners of Aqua Force. Um, <clears throat> for the next one, we're playing a new one called Nightmare Doll Li Liza. Liza. Ugh. Sorry, I got a frog in my mouth. 
Liza. And I'm gonna read this carefully because I'm blind about here. JB1. When this unit is placed from rare, on rare guard from your soul due to the effect of your Rookeroid, until the end of the turn, this unit gets 3,000 power and a new skill. At the end of your turn, count on charge 1. I'm playing only two of her just because mainly she's a 6k booster and attack in a 6k booster. But her ability is sick. So I figure, why not? It won't hurt probably just play her because after all, she's a nightmare doll and it won't break the, break the meta a little bit in the slightest. <laughs> Alright, and of course we have to com complete this conclusion of the Grade 1s by playing four copies of Dark Side Mirror Master, which is the GB1 um, or G Perfect Guard for the Undamaged Flipper. Because this deck does counterblast counter a lot on some parts. And then for grade 2, we're playing 4 uh, Nightmare Doll Ger Gerda. Gerda is a, a unique card. When this unit is placed on Rear Guard Circle, reveal the top 3 cards of your deck. If all the other cards have Nightmare Doll in their card names, choose a card from among them and put it into your soul and shuffle your deck. So if. If all the cards. So, and since we're playing a, f a full deck full of Nightmare Dolls, that won't be a fucking problem in the slightest. Next, we're playing uh, four genies. Let me see if I can get all that fit in there. Uh, she works. She's an amazing combo. She's a combo play for Alice as well. Whenever she's pl placed in a rear guard circle, and uh, let me see. Uh, put this in your soul, and if in superior call a nightmare doll Alice from the soul, and it gets three thousand power. Once again, awesome. And then finally for um, grade twos, we're playing the Nightmare Doll Master uh, Brenda. Brenda is like is not is like the only Nightmare Doll as only a human or an elf, and her skill is um, put this unit into your soul. She's up to one Rookeroid from your soul called Rear Guard, and the and until the end of the turn, that unit gets a new skill. When this unit is put into your soul from, from Rear Guard, choose a card named Nightmare Doll Brenda from your soul and call it a Rear Guard. When this unit is placed on Rear Guard Circle from soul, choose all of its unit, this unit's act, and they are lost until the end of turn. So my question is, that may not make any sense. But, it's passive. So she still counts as a Nightmare Doll. And then next for Grade threes, we're playing four copies of the main main antagonist is Catherine, Sister Catherine, and she, as long as you have her on your Vanguard Circle, all your Nightmare Doll Alice's gain a thousand power. And anytime an Alice come, goes into sold after the effect, you instead counterblast this card, and you put Alice in your soul, with Spirit Call on Alice. And the loop continues again and again, it's like, holy shit, the loop doesn't ever end. And then her auto, auto, auto skill is, when this unit is placed on Vanguard Circle, choose a card from the, from your deck up to... Uh, okay, I'm kind of fucking blind here. Oh, search your deck for up to one card put on your soul shelf of your deck. Ugh, why is it so hard for me to say it? I swear, I keep getting tongue tied. And I'm sorry about the glare, guys. The glare sucks. I know. It sucks. And then for the glass grade 3, we're playing four Alice's. And I'm sorry. Let me see if I can get this a better view of this. At this angle. Okay. There it is. So, yeah. There's that lineup. And let me see if I can hurry in. Okay. So maybe I won't be able to fix it like that. I'll just have to be careful because my camera also likes to bend down. <laughs> and no, I don't mean the giggity kind of the shit either. So that is my main deck. And let me hurry and put this... Um, let me see if I can try to angle it more. I don't know if this is going to work. Uh, maybe I go... Okay, this... Uh, hopefully it works, guys. I do apologize for that. 
All right. Oh, Helen, you're not sleeping. You're not sleeping. Stop it. All right. So, anyways, guys, sorry for that long that long pause. Um, for my extra deck, we're playing four copies of Nightmare Nightmare Doll of the Abyss Beatrix. Beatrix, when she attacks, when after the turn at, at the end of the battle that this unit attacked, choose up to three Rookroy monsters or Rookroy units from your side field, put them to the soul, um, put them to the soul, put her back into the G zone face up, and then Superior call two Alice, two Rookroy units from your soul. And this is where the loop kind of happens. <clears throat> the next one we're playing four copies of Nightmare Doll the Abyss uh, Eleanor. Eleanor ability is choose a face down rook royal from your G zone turn face up. Choose a card from your hand and put it into your soul. Look at the ten the top ten cards of your deck. Search for up to one grade three rook royal from among them. Reveal it, put it into your, put it as your, on your vanguard as a heart or into your soul. And shuffle your deck. If you put it on your vanguard as a heart, put all your other heart cards into the drop zone. I don't know. That that doesn't make kind of any sense to me at all. Just because I think I'd much rather have the unit as in the soul rather than the other way around. Unless it's specifically for Catherine, then, then that's it. Like, you're done. <laughs> and next we're playing two uh, Crudius Dragon Master Janet. Just because I don't know where else to really go with this. So I'm just trying to find a little preparedness right here. Next, um, playing two Miracle of Luna Square Cliffords and four G Guardians of Chainsaw Megatrick Furnival. Furnival is a is a special card for only Pelmon players can use, and his ability is look at the top three cards of your deck, place one in the soul, and choose the last two cards to the bottom of your deck in an order you wish, and this unit gets placed five thousand power on the shield. And since some players like Shaw Paladin has still Diablo or any card you can't use grade ones or higher to call to the Guardian Circle, you gotta use this. And then grade zeros. That's pretty much all. So that basically put you on a happy face. And I'm slowly losing my, losing my voice, guys, so I'm sorry. Okay. So anyways, guys, that concludes the deck profile of my Nightmare Dollies. And all their glorify evil and their possession. I come to find out later that these nightmare dolls were originally possessed by evil spirits as a sign of revenge. So, have you guys ever seen the movie Annabelle? That's what they're based on. So, anyways, guys, thank you guys for watching, and be sure to subscribe, like this video, thumbs up for it, and as always, guys, there'll be a full deck list to the bottom down below. So, anyways, guys, I know it's late. It's around, like, 11.41. My uncle's asleep in the other room. So, I'm trying to keep it as quiet as I can. But, yeah. So, anyways, guys, this concludes the video. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Remember, just be yourself. Have a good time. Whether it's in Yu-Gi-Oh! or Vanguard, just be yourself. See you guys later. Bye-bye.